In part A of this problem, we have 12 charges that are situated at the corner of a regular 12-sided polygon, and we want to find the net force at the center of the setup. And the answer is that the net force is equal to zero, and I'm going to give you two reasons why. So the first reason depends on, uh, depends on the fact that opposite charges cancel each other out. So let's, let us consider a simpler case. So let's say I have four charges instead of 12. And at the center, you can see that the net charge, uh, the net force is equal to zero, because uh, you can pair these two charges off, and you can see that they cancel each other out. And I can pair these two charges off as well. And then you can see that the, can uh, the contributions, they also cancel out. So I can just pair these off together, and then you can see that at the center, the net force is equal to zero, because they cancel the opposite charges cancel each other out. So I can extend this argument. So this is the case with four charges. I can extend this argument for a case with six charges. And then once again, you can see that these opposite charges, they cancel out. So at the center, the contributions, they cancel out. So in the end, the net force is also equal to zero. So in this case, the net force is equal to zero. And you can see that you can keep uh, uh, extending this argument for larger setups, provided that the number of charges is even. So we need an even number of charges because we need to pair them off. So there has to be an even number of charges. So in the case of 12 charges, the same argument just applies. You can just pair the charges off, and then in the end, you'll see that the net force is equal to zero. So this is the reason why the net force is equal to zero. So the second reason I can give you relies on a symmetry argument. So the second argument relies entirely on symmetry. So the reason is because the setup is symmetrical at the center, there is no reason for the net force to lean either way, though, so that's why it has to be equal to zero. So this argument is pretty similar to, uh, to, the, to a case where you have this flat surface and you have a sphere sitting on this surface. And because this surface is flat, it's symmetrical on every other side, there is no re tendency for this sphere to lean either way. That's why it will just sit still on this flat surface instead of spontaneously rolling to some random side. So by this same, uh, by a similar symmetry argument, you can see that for this symmetrical setup over here of 12 charges, there is no reason why the, charge, the net force should be leaning on either direction. So that's why the net force has to be equal to zero. So this is, these are two different reasons why for part A, the net force is equal to zero. So now let's move on to part B. So for part B, one of the 12 charges is removed. So let's just uh, try drawing out the setup. And you can imagine this kind of like a clock. So this top one will be 12. This is 1. This is 2. This is 3. So you can imagine this as being like a clock. So let's just draw the setup up. This is 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So now I have this setup of 12 charges. And from the previous section, you can uh, already explain that in the center, the net force is equal to 0. But now I'm going to remove this charge over here. So this is this positive Q charge. So in the charge in the middle has positive capital Q. So this charge here is small Q. So I'm removing this charge over here. So what is the net force experienced by this charge now? And the answer is the net force is given by this expression. And the reason for this, so I'm just going to write this as r squared. So r is going to be the distance from small q to big Q. So the reason why this is the case is because in the original setup, you can, uh, uh, we know that the net force is equal to 0. And now that we remove this positive Q charge, you can imagine uh, an equivalent situation is that you would superimpose a negative Q charge at this very point. So adding a negative Q charge to this point over here is equivalent to taking away this point entirely because you have positive Q and ne negative Q at the same point, they just cancel out. So since uh, without the negative Q charge, the setup contributes a ne uh, zero net force at the center, when I place a negative Q charge at this point, it is equivalent to having the charge alone facing a negative Q charge at this 6 o'clock point over here. And by Coulomb's law, we know that at this distance of r, the net force, uh, the force experienced at this point is given by this uh, by this expression. So notice that uh, I omitted the negative sign. So this is just a magnitude. I did not consider the direction. So this is the answer for part B. So you can imagine superimposing a negative Q charge to this point, which is equivalent to removing it. So that is the key to solving this problem. Now in part C, we have something uh, slightly similar to part A, but now we have 13 charges. So we, now we need want to find the net force at the center. And 
you can see that the first argument over here that we applied for part A does not work since we have 13 charges, which is not an even number. So I can't exactly pair off the charges because there are 13, point, uh, 13 charges. It's an odd number. So this I can't apply this uh, first argument to part C. But then the setup is symmetrical. So the, it's arranged at the corner of a regular 13-sided polygon. So the second second uh, reason over here actually does apply. So the setup is setup is symmetrical, and there is no reason why the net force should uh, be leaning on either side. So in the end, you see that for part C, even though we don't have 12 charges, we have 13 charges, uh, the net force is still equal to zero. But you should note that this first argument does not apply to part C, while the second argument applies to both part A and part C. And uh, in part D, we have something similar to part B. Now one of the 13 charges is removed. So you can imagine something similar to this. Yeah, and we can just imagine removing the charge uh, as the same thing as a superimposing a negative, negative Q charge. So in the end, we have a situation that uh, kind of boils down to something that looks like this. And this uh, the answer is, as you would expect, the same as part B. So the net force experienced by the charge at the center will be equal to this. So for part B and for part D, the answer is the same, for the same reason, pretty much.